praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Little interruption there, but that's okay. Praise God. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you touch this message, Lord, this morning. Help us all to see more than ever that we're to stop the what-ifs and just trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. The name of this devotional today, Give Up the What-Ifs and Just Trust the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go over to Psalm 37, verse 3. Trust, and that word means trust, have confidence in, hope in the Lord, and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. In other words, he, he is and will do this. When he says it'll happen, it will. You will dwell in the land, and you will be fed. If you trust in him and do good. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. I want to read the commentary on Charles Spurgeon on this verse. It's really good. Trust in the Lord. Faith cures fretting. Wow. Faith cures fretting. Sight is cross-eyed. And it views things only as they seem. Faith has clearer optics to behold things as they really are. Hence, peace. And do good. True faith is actively obedient. Doing good is a fine remedy for fretting. There is a joy in holy activity which drives away the rest of discontentment. So shalt thou dwell in the, in the land. In the land which floweth with milk and honey. The land, the Canaan of the covenant. Thou shalt not wander in the wilderness of murmuring, but abide in the promised land of content and rest. We which have believed do enter into rest. And here it is. Very much of our outward depends upon the inward. Where there is heaven in the heart, there will be heaven in the house. And verily thou shalt be fed or shepherded to integrity and faith. Necessaries are guaranteed. The good shepherd will exercise his pastoral care over all believers. In truth, they shall be fed and fed on truth. The promise of God shall be their perpetual banquet. They shall neither lack in spirituals nor in temperance. Hallelujah. And we need to keep this in our mind and heart. Especially in this hour. Trust in the Lord. This devotional, give up the what ifs and just trust the Lord. I once met a poor colored woman who earned a precarious living by hard daily labor, but who was a joyous, triumphant Christian. Ah, Nancy, said a gloomy Christian lady to her one day, it is well enough to be happy now, but I should think the thoughts of your future would sober you. Only suppose, for instance, you should have a spell of sickness. What if? And be unable to work. What if? 
Or suppose your present employers should move away. What if? And no one else should give you anything to do. What if? Or suppose... Stop! cried Nancy. I never supposes... The Lord is my shepherd, and I knows I shall not want. And honey, she added to her gloomy friend, it's all them supposes as is making you so miserable. You better give them all up and just trust the Lord. You better give them all up, all those supposes, all those what-ifs, and just trust the Lord. There is one text that will take all the supposes out of a believer's life if it be received and acted on in childlike faith. It's Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. Let your conversation, your character, your, the manner in which you speak be without covetousness, greedy, wanting what others have, and greedy of filthy lucre of money, and be content, be satisfied with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, I will never desert thee, nor forsake thee, nor leave thee. That's what he said. And verse 6, So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Wow. So this has to do with our character and our conversation that we be not covetous and that we be content with what we have and know that the Lord is not going to leave us he's not going to forsake us and then so that we may also say the Lord is my helper we can say that in confidence he's my helper he's my helper he's my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Let's go over there to Hebrews 13. Let your conversation be without covetousness, which is an immoderate, immoderate desire of riches and overanxious care for worldly things attended with dissatisfaction and discontent with their present state. It discovers itself many ways in preferring the world to religion and laying up treasure for a man's own self without being any ways useful to others in withholding from himself the necessaries of life and in making no use of his substance for the glory of God and the interest of religion. This is a very great evil. It is called idolatry. And then be content with such things as you have. Or with present things. With present riches or with present poverty. With present losses and crosses. With present reproaches and afflictions and contentment. With these things shows itself by thankfulness. For every mercy and by submission to the will and providence of God in every state of life for he has said I will never leave thee nor forsake thee it's a promise that's a promise I will never leave thee nor forsake thee it's a promise made to Joshua, and it belongs to all believers, which may regard things temporal as that God will not leave his people, 
in the hands of their enemies, nor forsake them in distress, nor withhold any good thing from them needful for them, but will supply them with the necessaries of life in which they should be content. Now that's pretty awesome, isn't it? So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. That's pretty powerful right there. There's a stream of trouble across my path. It is black and deep and wide. Bitter the hour the future hath when I cross its swelling tide. But I smile and sing and say, I will hope and trust always. I'll bear the sorrow that comes tomorrow, but I'll borrow none today. Tomorrow's bridge is a dangerous thing. I dare not cross it now. No, not today. I can see its timbers sway and swing and its arches reel and bow. Oh, heart, you must hope always. You must sing and trust and say, I'll bear the sorrow that comes tomorrow, but I'll borrow none today. The eagle that soars in the upper air doesn't worry itself as to how it's to cross the rivers. What's that saying to us? Soar as the eagle in the heavenly places and be at rest and be at peace and don't let those what ifs enter in but just trust the Lord. Hallelujah. What a word for us today in Jesus name.